Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Legal Marketing Coffee Talk. We're back with another of our special Career Week episodes. I'm staging a bit of a coup today and hosting by myself. So since I'm on my own, let's get right to our guest. Our guest today is an award-winning career coach and author. He's provided career consulting and executive coaching since 1992 and is the author of two books, Get the Job You Want Even When No One's Hiring and The Ultimate Career Guide. He has had articles featured in many, many publications, including the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, Inc. Magazine, and Fortune, and has appeared on CNN, NBC, CBS, PBS, ABC, NPR, and most of the other letters of the alphabet. I'd like to introduce the president and of Career Potential, LLC, and my good friend, Ford Myers. Hi, Ford. Hello, Rob. How are you today? Good. Welcome to Legal Marketing Coffee Talk. I'm very happy to be here with you. We're happy to have you here. Say hi to all the legal marketers out there. Hi to all the legal marketers out there. It's, uh, it's good to have you. So Ford and I have known each other for years and are, are good friends. Uh, Ford was, I think I, I made that first video I made for you was back when your book first came out, when the Get the yeah. Job You Want came Around out. Around 2009. Yeah. So it's been a, a long time. Um, and I since have, have filmed lots of stuff for Ford and, and we're personal friends. And um, I'm always just amazed at the material that uh, that he puts out and, and uh, his information. Um, one of the fun parts about my job is that I get to I get to learn a lot of things as we film different people and different people with different expertise. And as I said, Ford's always just got such great information. So when we decided to do Career Week, I thought it would be great to bring in somebody from from outside of the legal marketing area to uh, talk a little bit about um, sort of general career topics. So sure. today we're going to be talking about career. Perpetual career management. Perpetual, perpetual career management. Perpetual career management. Yes, that's a, a mouthful. So I think that the the current situation um, kind of hit everybody as a surprise, and I think a lot of people who were happily bouncing through their jobs, not expecting anything to to change, are suddenly finding themselves seeing a lot of changes. And and this, you know, besides the fact that people have been furloughed, laid off. Um, I think everybody's realizing that, you know, the, the business and work world may be changing as we start seeing more work from home and, and things like that. So um, that's why we, we decided we would, would bring up this subject today. So Ford, tell me a little bit about your, your definition of, career, of perpetual career management. Right. So you are correct that we're suffering through a very difficult period right now in all careers, including legal and marketing and everything else. Um, nobody was expecting this. It hit us all, blindsided us all. And it's a very, very difficult thing to navigate through. But even in the best of times, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to manage our careers? You see, what most people do is they enter into what I call career complacency, okay? They get complacent. Their job is fine. Their career is going okay before COVID-19, of course. And um, they sort of fall into a familiar, comfortable pattern until something happens, like they get laid off or their company goes out of business or their industry changes completely or what have you. This is a very dangerous situation. From a career perspective, you should never become complacent. You should never assume that tomorrow is going to be the same as yesterday. It's essential that everyone be focused on managing their careers every day, every week, every month. It's sort of like breathing. You have to keep breathing to stay alive. Well, you have to keep managing your career in order to keep your career alive. But a lot of people get career complacent. It's a sad situation, and it yields some very poor results. Okay, so um, what can people do to begin that that process of perpetual career management? Well, you know, again, there's two kinds of people. There's, there's sort of the entrepreneurial people, small business owners, consultants. 
they know they have to per perpetually manage their career. They know they have to constantly be marketing. They know they always have to be looking for their next client, no matter how busy they get. Right. Yep. But when it comes to people who have you know regular jobs, they don't really think that way. They get career complacent and they need to adopt a whole new set of behaviors to think more like an entrepreneur, to think more like an independent agent. And so some of these uh, qualities or these activities that people need to pursue are things that you might normally ascribe to uh, small business owners or freelancers or consultants, but that's not true anymore. It has to be applied, it has to be adopted by everybody, even if you're in a full-time job. So over the years, I've created a collection in my work with clients, I've created a collection of behaviors or activities or strategies that I believe everyone, everyone needs to pursue at all times, no matter what your career situation happens to be. Now, right now we're in this, this lull, okay, this downtime. We are in our houses, we're, um, you know, uh, in, in, this, in this kind of a no man's land right now where nobody quite knows what's gonna happen in the long term. And essentially, there's two kinds of people. There's the kind of person who is just sitting by the sidelines doing nothing. They're just waiting for this to be over. They're very passive. Then there's the other kind of person who is active, proactive, who is uh, taking advantage of this time to, to really you know, create some benefit, to get some momentum, to learn new skills, to improve, to prepare for whatever comes next, to get ready for a better career future when the pandemic is over. Well, people have to ask themselves, which category do they fall into? Are they the passive people sitting on the sidelines doing nothing? Or are they the proactive people who are, at, who are really doing things and creating a platform for greater success? Okay, are they paralyzed or are they mobilized? That's the question. And I think that everyone needs to come to terms with this. They need to ask themselves the question, which group do you fall into? Obviously, my preference and my suggestion is that people fall into the category of being proactive and mobilized, taking advantage of this opportunity to create a better career future, to build skills, to get traction, to really up their game. And by upping their game, they can employ these 10 perpetual career management strategies. Okay. And what are the 10 strategies? Well, they are, uh, they, they are right. Write this down, folks. Yeah. Write this down, folks. I'm going to, I'm going to share them with you now. And here's, what's interesting. If you look at each one of them individually, okay. Independently, you might say, Oh yeah, I've, I, that makes sense. I've done that. Or yeah, I've done some of that. No big deal. What's the, what's the big deal? Well, each one might sound relatively simplistic, but that's not how this works. The way this works is that you need to employ all 10 of these strategies at the same time, concurrently, in concert with one another, in tandem with one another, always. When you do that, when you put these 10 strategies together, combine them, leverage them at all times in your career, that's where the magic happens. That's where you start to see amazing results. So let me share these with you and I'll do them two at a time because it's a lot to absorb. The first strategy is keep all your career documents and tools up to date. I can't tell you how many people I talk to who haven't looked at their own resume in 10 years. They haven't updated or even looked at their LinkedIn profile in three years. And that's all they have. What about all their other tools? What about their uh, list of references. What about their letters of recommendation? What about a one page biography? What about a collection of career testimonials? What about your accomplishment stories? This is where people give me a blank stare and they go, well, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, everybody needs this full portfolio of self marketing materials and they need to be kept up to date all the time because you never know what's going to happen. You could go into your job thinking everything's great and then you get a pink slip and you're out on the street in, in two minutes. So you can give yourself a head start by having all your career documents up to date 
always at all times. You know, things happen. Sometimes they're voluntary, sometimes they're involuntary, but changes occur, so you have to be prepared. You never you never know when there might be a worldwide pandemic. Yeah, yeah, it happened anytime. Uh, that's a good line. Now, the second strategy in our list of uh, behaviors is to put time aside every week for networking. Every week. As I said before, networking is like breathing. If you stop breathing, you die. If you stop networking, your career dies. So networking needs to be built in to your regular, normal, everyday professional activities. And people often say to me, but Ford, who has time for networking? I don't have time for networking. I'm busy. I'm up to my eyeballs with projects and things I have to do. And, you know, I, I can barely fit everything in as it is. To which I say, no, no, no. You've got to change your whole perspective. That's the wrong attitude. you got to get over that. My belief is the busier you are, the more you need to network. The more successful you are, the more you need to network. The more you're flying high with tons of great projects and a million great clients, the more you need to network. So, you know, my father used to have a saying, he said, if you want to be sure that something gets done, give it to the busiest person you know. Now that's kind of counterintuitive, right? You would think, yeah, no, you should give it to the least busy person, you right. know, because they have tons of time on their hands and they can, no, that's not how this works. There's a reason why some people are busy and some people are not busy at all. If you want to get something done and be sure it gets done in a timely manner, give it to the busiest person you know. Why? Because they have the habit of being productive and getting things done. They understand success behaviors. So if you don't have time for networking, make time for networking. Nobody has time for networking. I understand that. But successful people make time for networking. So let me give you an example. When I work with clients in their job search as a career coach, let's say I'm working with someone, they get a great new job after a lot of effort and time. Fantastic. We celebrate, we jump up and down, we scream and yell, congratulations, this is fabulous. You have your great new job, incredible. And then I say, take out your calendar. And they say, what? I say, take out your calendar. So they take out their calendar. And I say, when are you starting this job? And they say, oh, you know, Monday, uh, whatever, July 12th. Okay, Monday, July 12th, that's your first day. Yep, good. Take out your calendar. And on the week of July 12th, I want you to block out two whole sections of time for networking. And they say, what do you mean? I told you, I just got a job. I don't have to network anymore. And I say, haven't you been listening? In all the time we've been working together, haven't you been paying attention? The networking doesn't stop. It's perpetual. It's like breathing. You don't decide to stop breathing. So they block out literally chunks of time in their calendar for that week, the next week, the following week, and forever. It never, never, never stops. The networking never stops. If you can't get people to help you, then you help other people. It never stops. It's like breathing. So making time for active networking is strategy number two. Strategy number one, as I said earlier, was keep all your career success documents up to date. Okay. Does that make sense? That absolutely makes sense. That's uh, So I'm in that first category. I'm a business owner, but... Um, yeah, and it's sort of been pre-wired for me to try to do all this stuff, um, sure. but it's hard to get to. So I can certainly understand that somebody that's in a full-time job that doesn't have to keep that that pipeline going all the time, that it's easy to, to forget this stuff. So what are the next points? Well, I'll get there, but first I wanna mention something. Here you are, a self-employed individual, independent contractor, if you will, small business owner, well, you know from experience that the time when you need to market most is when you are busiest with the most projects. Which, of course, isn't the time that I do it. So just like somebody that's fully employed in a job they're comfortable in, 
I'm slacking off at those times because I'm busy and don't have the time to do it. Yes, it's counterintuitive. But you also know from experience that when you're busy, 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 you're working really hard, you have all these clients, you're getting all these projects done, and then you're finished, it all stops, you heave a sigh of relief, and then you go, uh, wait a minute, who turned out the lights? I got no work, I got no business, I have nothing in the pipeline. That's when you learn your lesson that the time you need to market hardest is when you're busiest. Otherwise, things come to a screeching halt and you have nothing, and that's a bad, bad place to be. Especially during a worldwide pandemic. Especially during a pandemic. So to move on now to my third strategy for perpetual career management, here it is. Join and take leadership roles in professional associations and organizations. Now, I'm not talking about joining a club or an association, sending in your check, and then never doing anything. It's easy to send in a check or pay online. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doing that and then following up by being actively engaged, getting fully involved with the organization, moving into a leadership role, you know, stepping up to a high visibility position within the association and really getting known, getting seen, distinguishing yourself as a thought leader, as an expert, as a person in charge, get to the front of the room, get on their newsletter, get in on their website. This is going to elevate you to a higher status of being expert thought leader. Plus, it sort of creates an army of people who are directing job leads toward you and career opportunities toward you. Because if an opportunity comes along that's not right for one of the members, they'll say, oh, well, you know what? You should call Rob. He's the president of our association. He knows everything. He, he's, he, he's the smartest guy in the room. So what you want to do is become highly visible, highly credible, give back to your professional community, get actively engaged, distinguish yourself as a leader. This will really boost your credibility and your reputation, it'll build your brand. Also, when you are in a professional association, they might give you opportunities to do things that you never had the chance to do in your job. Like your job might not include a certain kind of work, a certain kind of behavior, but in an association or an organization, they might have you do this and do that and try this and try that, contribute in this area, that area, which you've never done before. It's a great chance to stretch your capabilities and your skills some of which can be added then to your resume. So there's all kinds of good reasons to become actively involved in professional associations and organizations. There's no downside. And see, that point I think is going to really resonate. A lot of our audiences, I think I mentioned to you, are involved with the um, Legal Marketing Association. And many of them have taken on leadership roles or committee roles. Um, and, and it's really worked out. I know a lot of people that it's, it's really been very helpful for, so. Yeah, it's really important. Plus it makes you feel good to be involved and to give something back. Yeah. Now you're gonna ask me the next strategy. So the next one I wanna to mention to you is to write articles, social media posts, and do presentations. See, what I'm getting at here is the phrase I used before, thought leader and expert. You've got to distinguish yourself, not just as another one, another legal marketing person, another video guy. Nobody cares. What they care about <clears throat> is someone who has really distinguished themselves and has become a very well-known entity, all right? A thought leader, an expert, a true leader in their field. That's the person who gets attention. High visibility, high credibility. And one of the best ways to do that is to become a known voice, a recognized presence in your niche. How do you do that? Writing and speaking. So if you write even short blurbs on LinkedIn or some other social media platform, if you respond to what other people have posted, great. If you post your own items and even write articles, great. You can publish your material online or offline. There are still print publications that are happy to take your material. And there is a never ending need for content. Every forum needs material. There's a never ending hunger for content. So a person who is 
aspiring to reach their career potential should always be writing, responding, commenting, liking on social media. They should be posting their own materials. They should be writing articles and getting their stuff out there, getting their name out there, getting their byline out there. When it comes to public speaking, I know that some people would rather step in front of a train as compared to get in front of a room, do a talk. Well, look, you're talking to me. I am a introvert off the charts. Okay. I am a massive introvert. And yet I've done thousands of talks nationally, locally, television, radio, things like this, webinars, you name it. And it's very, 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 very challenging for me, but I've, decided to get over that apprehension, to get over the resistance and just do what I have to do because it's important to me to achieve my goals. So when someone says to me, oh, I'm afraid of public speaking. I don't want to do any public speaking. I say to them, get over it. That's what I say to them. You want a career? You want to have success? You want to reach your potential? Get over it. Now, they can start small. You know, you don't have to be in front of an amphitheater with 12,000 people. You could give a talk at the local library your local, um, you know, civic association. I don't care. Be in a classroom where there's six class members. It doesn't matter. Start small and build up gradually. You must be a face. You must be present. These days you can do it online using webinars or uh, experiences like this, interviews. The point is everyone has a voice. Every professional has something to say. Some people are going to get their name and their face out there. Some people aren't. In this world, you got to promote yourself a little bit, right? You got to build your brand. So my advice to people is to write articles, do social media posting, make presentations, get yourself known, get yourself out there, distinguish yourself as a thought leader and expert. So I hope that makes sense, Rob. It absolutely makes sense. Now, let me just say something. I've been doing this for a long time. I have taught these skills and urged my clients to employ these strategies. Why? Because it works. I'm not doing this just for fun. When I see clients employ these strategies, incredible things happen. They're astonished. They're amazed at having their careers take off and getting incredible opportunities in their careers and job offers. So I'm not recommending these strategies just to waste time. I'm doing them because they work. Absolutely. So moving, moving on to the list on the list and everybody, I'm going to post these after the show. We'll post them in the description. Uh, there's a link to Ford's website that has this whole list. So you can uh, reference it yourself later. That's great, Rob. Thank you. So there are a couple of other strategies I want to mention. Now, these are activities that perpetual career managers should always be doing for maximum career success, no matter what their career circumstances happen to be. Unemployed, employed, fully employed, underemployed, I don't care, freelance, doesn't matter. These are universal. They apply to everyone under any circumstance. So the next strategy I want to talk to you about for perpetual career management is to continue your career education and professional development. Continue your career education and professional development. See, too many people have this attitude like their education ended when they left school, okay? When they finished college or high school or whatever, when they got their master's degree, I'm done. My education is complete. That's not how this works, folks. You've got to continually educate yourself no matter what. I don't care if you have 10 PhDs. You've got to still keep growing, learning, you got to keep your intellectual capital fresh, keep yourself current, keep yourself competitive in the work world. So I don't care what industry credentials you have. It's not enough. You cannot be complacent. You cannot rest on your laurels. Continually build your resume. Continually build your credentials. This makes you much more attractive as a candidate. It makes you much more marketable. Look, you know, the only competitive advantage you have is between your two ears. The only thing that keeps you marketable is when you're constantly growing and refreshing your, um, your brain power, your skills, your knowledge. Nobody wants to hire somebody whose you know, intellectual capital is stale. 
So keep growing, keep learning, and keep improving your mental and intellectual resources. This is really, really important. I don't care if you're at the beginning of your career or the middle or the end. An interviewer might say to you, what have you been doing lately to improve your skills? What have you done lately to get more training and education? And if you just say, uh, nothing, nope, then that's a bad answer and the interview is probably over. So this in itself is a competitive advantage. So shall I go on to the next one, Rob? Yeah. Let's move on to the next the next category. So the next category or the next strategy I, I want to mention is called research and be aware of the business landscape and your competition. Research and be aware of the business landscape and your competition. So here's what I mean. People get a job or they're working in a particular industry. They're in their little niche. They're in the little box. They're in their little silo, right? And they live inside this silo and everything is self-referential and self-contained and they're living in their own little bubble. Bad, bad idea. I don't care how busy you are. You've got to have a wider view. You've got to look at the whole business landscape. You've got to know what's going on in your business community, in your community, in your city, in your county, in your state, and in your country and the world. You've got to stay educated and up to speed on everything that's going on in the business world around you. So that in itself is another competitive advantage. You can actually help get yourself hired into new opportunities by proving how current you are and how knowledgeable you are about the business landscape. Now I mentioned the word competition. I believe that you need to know the competition better than they know themselves. It's your job to know all the players in your niche all the companies, all the organizations, who are they? What are they doing? What are they doing well? What are they doing poorly? Where are they better than your firm? Where are they worse than your firm? Who are they hiring? What are they paying? What kind of projects are they working on? Who are their clients? On and on and on. You've got to be really plugged in. You've got to have your ear to the ground and your finger on the pulse all the time for all the competition. And when I say competition, I'm talking about two different categories. There's the competition on a corporate or business level. And then there's the competition on the individual or candidate level. So who are your competitors who competes with your business, your company, but also who do you compete with personally? Who's out there that has jobs like yours that are vying for the same opportunities? Who has similar background and experience as you have? You got to know that because otherwise, how can you possibly compete successfully? So who are they? What's their background? What's their training? What are their advantages? What are they good at? What are they not so good at? This is critically important. So that's a really great strategy for people to employ at all times throughout their careers. I hope that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. So the next one is one that I really like. So let's uh, let's move on to that because I want to make sure we get through all of these. Sure, no problem. This is one of my favorites. It's called Offer to Help People in Your Network, even if they're not in a position to help you right now. You've heard the phrase, what goes around comes around. You might have heard the phrase, pay it forward. Well, yeah, it's all true. There's another phrase that is used a lot in the sales industry, and it is this. They say, if you help enough other people get what they want, then you are assured of getting what you want too. You know, there's a book out there which is called The Go-Giver. It's a little red paperback book. It's called The Go-Giver. I highly recommend it. It teaches a lot of lessons about why this is, how the universe works and why it's so important to pay it forward, to give, to be generous, and to really lend uh, help to people, no matter what the circumstance. It's incredible to me how many people, again, they're in their little bubble, they don't wanna to talk to, they don't wanna help other people, they don't wanna take the time. That's very, very short-sighted. So when you put it out there and really help others, obviously they will remember you, you're putting out goodwill. And you've got to always try to help others 
before you seek to help yourself. So for example, when I send my clients out on networking meetings, because let's face it, 95% of good positions are found through networking. So when I send clients out to do their one-on-one -on -one networking, I always hammer home a particular message, which is seek to be of help before you seek to be helped. Meaning when they're in a one-on-one -on -one networking meeting, even though they asked for the meeting, they have to leave that meeting knowing that they added just as much value to the other person as they, as they took from the other person. Otherwise, it's a failed meeting. So you don't want to walk out of a network meeting saying, oh, this is great. I got five new contacts. I got five new referrals. I got a lot of advice and information. That was great. No, it wasn't great if you didn't equally help the other person with whatever they're facing in their lives or careers. Very, very important to understand that. So build networking into your daily and, and weekly and monthly life like it's breathing. Helping is what it's all about. It's not just about taking. When I teach networking, people often say, oh, it makes me uncomfortable because I don't like to take advantage of people. Or I don't like to, uh, you know, um, uh, what's that word when you, uh, you're asking people for something? I don't want to impose. I don't like to impose. This is not about imposing. This is not about taking advantage. It's quite the opposite. You're giving the other person an opportunity to be helped by you just as much as you'll get help. So that's how I look at it. All right. Come from a spirit of generosity. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. Shall I go on? Shall I move on? Yep. Let's, let's keep going. Okay, young man. So the next strategy that I want to mention to you is always look at new jobs and investigate new opportunities. So people often say, Hey, I got a good job. I'm fine. What am I worried about? I'm not going to waste time looking at jobs. I'm not going to go on networking meetings. I'm not going to have interviews. Certainly my job is fine. I'm good. Well, remember what I was saying about for people, because it's, I think people feel really awkward if they're, they want to be loyal to their job and their current position, but, how do you how do you take advantage of opportunities at the same time? Well, that's an interesting word that you just used called loyal. You know, people always say, I don't want to be disloyal. Well, guess what? If your organization no longer has a need for you, they will let you go in 10 seconds. Yeah. Where's the loyalty there? This bond or this pact of loyalty that used to exist between employer and employee decades ago has been gone for decades. OK, it's every man or woman for themselves at this point. You're not part of their organization. You're just a contractor. You are an independent agent. So I believe in loyalty, but I believe that loyalty needs to be directed to the right places like your friends and your family. And I think we've talked about this. Our generation still has that mindset of you get a job, you work for the company, you stay with the company, you grow with the company. They take care of you and give you insurance and a parking space and a gold watch at the end. But um, I mentioned that the millennials are really the totally different, think totally differently. Well, in one sense, that's a good thing. You know, in, 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 that's one way I happen to enjoy and believe that millennials have it right. So my point is here, forget the loyalty pact. Sure, when you have a job there, work hard, do your best and contribute as much as you can. But don't ever get complacent and think that it's forever. The point here is that you've got to always keep your eyes open for other opportunities. I mean, literally look at other jobs. I mean, literally go on at least three interviews a year, at least to keep your skills polished, keep yourself fresh and to learn what's out there in the marketplace. you got to, you know, stay competitive and know what's going on out there. What are they offering? What are they paying? How do your skills stack up? How do you compare to the other people who have similar jobs? This is about preparation. You'll also learn a lot about the business landscape. You'll also st stay current with what's going on in the business world. So always be looking at new jobs, new opportunities, Contis consistently interview whenever you can. When you're networking, ask about 
opportunities, about gaps, about ways that you could potentially add service. That's how you create opportunities and that's how you set the stage for new opportunities for the future. I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, totally, totally makes sense. Now, I can give you examples after examples, but we don't have time. But I've done this with so many clients and they come back to me and they say, oh my God, you were right. It's amazing. Well, I've been doing this for 25 or 30 years. So these, tra these strategies do work. Absolutely. So let's get to the last two since we're running out of time. Yes. So the next strategy is to always ask yourself, how can I contribute more? More? Yeah, more. You know, again, people say, but I'm up to my eyeballs. I'm so busy, I can't even see straight. That just means you're managing your job wrong. You're not delegating properly. You're not setting clear boundaries. So people have to be in this mindset of contributing more, not less. They have to grab onto those plum assignments, the ones that have high visibility, high impact. If you do this consistently, who do you think is going to get the raise or the promotion when a new opportunity opens up? If you're the one who's always on the radar of the boss, if you're the one who's always helping out and adding value, then you will benefit long term and so will your employer. So always try to step up, put your hand up and volunteer for those great assignments. Don't hide in the shadows hoping that they'll ignore you or forget about you. And the very last strategy is to practice your interviewing negotiating and related skills constantly, all the time. I love it when people say, but I haven't interviewed in 12 years. Oh my God. Why haven't you been practicing? Why haven't you been working with a job search buddy or a, or, or a career partner? Or why haven't you been working with a coach? You've got to consistently bring these skills up to the surface, polish them, perfect them, because you never know what's going to happen in your career or in your job. The person who is ready to go at a moment's notice can shave months off their job search if they have to look for a new role. That's much better than getting a pink slip and then going, oh my God, I'm stuck in the mud. I don't know what to do. I haven't been networking. I haven't been practicing. I'm totally rusty. Bad situation. So if you're polished and practiced and ready to go at a moment's notice, this can help you to hit the ground running and have a lot of momentum right from day one. And I think that goes along with your earlier point about making sure all your documents are kept up to date and your LinkedIn page is up to date. That if if you don't have all that stuff suddenly when the time does come that you do need it because there's a worldwide pandemic, you're uh, you're going to now suddenly find yourself not ready to, to jump. That's right. Exactly right. And let's sum it up with just one statement. The only real job security you have is in developing and maintaining your knowledge and competitiveness in the marketplace. So I underscore that because that's what all these strategies are about. They're about getting you away from career complacency, helping you to manage your career perpetually for maximum results. That's perfect, perfect way to sum it up. Well, Ford, that was really great information. Um, I will put a link in the description field to uh, all of this, this whole list on Ford's website and also a link to his website um, if you want to get some more information about career potential. And his website's full of really terrific resources for anybody that's looking for a job, has a job, and wants to maintain, perpetually maintain their career management. Right. Uh, and then I'll also have to point out Ford also has an amazing YouTube channel full of these great videos that somebody edited and did a really great job that on. You, that you worked on, Rob. Um, but really just a, a whole a whole channel of videos with some fantastic tips and strategies to, uh, to manage your career and get a job and all that. So um, now we're going to move on to our favorite part of the show, which is uh, we ask each of our guests every week to bring on a personal item that they can share. And one of the things that Ford and I share is we both have a collection of frogs. So mm -hmm. uh, I think Ford is going to bring a frog and I brought a frog with me today. Um, so we're going to show those. So Ford, let's see what, what you brought with you. Okay. One second. This this is my buddy. His name is Frogger. <laughs> and he talks and he walks 
and he wiggles on his belly like a reptile. Cool. What is he? Is he a wind up or? Uh... Well, no, but he's um, he's he has a lot of energy and he's a very engaging fellow. Fun. Oh. So I brought a classic frog. Oh yeah. It's Kermit. That's the man. That's uh, everybody's favorite frog because it isn't easy being green. Well, here, let's introduce them. Frog. It's Kermit. not easy being green in a worldwide pandemic. Damn right. Hey, frog. So. Thanks, Rob. There we go. So Before, thank you again so much for being on today. Um, it was really a great conversation. I see lots of people in the comments. Um, really uh, got some, some good information and uh, Happy to do it it, it was, was great fun and i really appreciate the opportunity and i encourage anyone who wants to talk feel free to reach out i'm always available okay terrific so um tomorrow we have jessica aries back and she's going to be chatting with um eva wisnick uh, from wisnick career enterprises about maintaining wellness while you are in a career transition so um, that should be a great show. And remember, anybody who's put a comment in the comment field, you will have a chance to win one of these little mini tripod phone holders. Um, so look for that. And um, can I back out now? <laughs> can you back out now? Not yet. Not yet. We're not done. Do you want me to stay? Uh, All right, I'll stay. So thanks again, everybody. It was uh, we're we're glad you watched. We'll uh, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow. And remember, wash your hands, wear your mask. Vote when it's time and we'll see you on Thursday.